Well, hello, YouTube. We are going to tie up uh, something different today. This is a jig streamer. And the reason I decided to do a jig streamer video is because uh, this guy in the vise bailed me out today. I was out on a local stream, hit some unexpected conditions with uh, some, some dirty water. Uh, apparently there was some construction going on in a tributary and it was washing down. Uh, even though we haven't had any rain, I was dealing with uh, chocolate milk-like conditions, and it was all from a, a, a dam removal project uh, in a tributary about a half a mile up, and it was just sending down uh, chocolate-colored water. I, I almost left, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give the jig streamer a try, and uh, and it worked. It bailed me out. So uh, this this fly is is something that you can use. It's designed. George Daniels popularized this where I first saw it. Um, you can uh, fish this on a tight line system. So I today had my 10 foot three weight, which is normally my Euro rig, uh, my Euro nymphing rig. And uh, you can fish this just like you would a pair of nymphs. Uh, you stay in contact with it. Uh, it is tied on a jig hook, uh, as I'll show you here in a second. And um, you just stay in contact with it. You give it a little action. Uh, but you basically fish it on a dead drift and trout take to it really well. Uh, so in the dirty conditions that I had, this this uh, streamer worked out great. So we will uh, go ahead here and we'll get one in the started in the vise. We're going to use a size 10 uh, jig hook, as you can see. And then I'm going to pair that with a 4.0 tungsten bead. Uh, I normally would use a slotted bead. I don't have any slotted beads that size, so the round bead... Uh, works just fine for this. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some uh, some lead wire uh, around the the shank of the hook to add some extra weight. Uh, so I'm going to get started with that here. I don't use a lot of flies with extra weight, uh, but I, I like to um, add a little weight to these guys just just to help get them down. And I also like to lock that bead in there, especially since this is a round bead uh, going onto a, uh, a jig hook. So again, I've got some extra uh, lead wraps there, as you can see, to give that a little bit of bulk. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is get some thread wraps. And uh, for that, I'm gonna be using Vivas uh, Black in 140. I like the heavier duty thread for this fly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna build a little bit of a, whoop, a little bit of a thread dam there, right behind the lead. And then I'm just gonna come up, secure that lead in place, and tie off back where I am going to put the tail. All right, for my tail, just like you would for a woolly bugger, uh, I'm gonna be using some black marabou. So I'm gonna measure, and I want it about one and a half times the size uh, or the length of the fly. So I've got two pieces of marabou that I selected here for this. And I'm gonna use a pin trap to just first get that in. Um, anytime I'm wrapping something bulky like this, um, I like to do, I like to, to watch my thread torque um, and, and I'll come around and then I'll put that tension when I when I pull up like that. All right, and then uh, I'll secure the rest of this down before I trim that off. All right. Now the next thing that we're gonna use here is uh, something called polar chenille hairline makes this um, this is uh, the black UV uh, but you can see it's got some purple in it uh, so we're gonna tie that up as the uh, as the body but before I do that I'm gonna just tighten that marabou down and I'm gonna make some turns back toward uh, back toward the tail and I'm gonna take my piece of polar chenille and I trimmed some of the pieces off just to make a tie-in point. I'm going to do another pinch wrap. You know, I've got a loose wrap and then I'm going to tighten it on my way back up. 
And then I'm just gonna bring that down to secure it right down toward the bead. Okay. All right, so I don't really need my thread here, so I'm gonna hang it on the cradle. I am gonna use my rotary vise or my rotary feature to wrap this. But before I do that, um, see how this stuff's all kind of sticking in one way? You wanna, you wanna try to get it almost like when you're working with a, a CDC, you're putting in a CDC collar. Um, I wanna try to get it all to one side. And that way when you wrap it up, um, you kind of want the, I want the polar chenille to go backwards. So as you're as you're wrapping it, and watch that hook point. It's a bigger hook than I'm used to working with. So um, I, I like to kind of try to grab it and keep that back. Um, grab it and you re reach it back. So I, I lied. I said I was going to use my rotary feature, but I actually, um, as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do it by hand because I like to be able to move those fibers backward as I wrap toward the front. Okay, I'm gonna push them, just continue to push back almost like you would with, like I said, CDC. All right, let's see if I can get one more turn there up toward the bead. And it looks like I'm able to. So, all right, I will uh, get my thread back under control here. Move that up to a controllable distance. And then I'm gonna bring that around and tie that. Let's see. Once to lock it in. Slide my cradle out of the way there. And do another, another one. And then one in front. And uh, what the heck, we'll do another one just for good luck. All right, so I got that little bit there. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna trim that off. Now, if you want, <clears throat> you you can do more of this. Um, some of these uh, before before that, uh, I'll tie in some crystal flash. Um, if you want to put some dubbing, something uh, as a collar. I gotta be honest. I don't really think it matters, um, and I don't I don't generally do that. I like to tie a bunch of these up because uh, you lose a lot of them. I lose more of these in trees for some reason, um, but. At this point, I'm just going to do a whip finish. Again, try to move all those fibers back. Get a nice, strong whip finish there. And with that 140 denier, usually just one whip finish is good. Uh, I honestly, I don't bother with head cement or anything like that with these. I find these to be pretty, pretty darn durable. So, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's the uh, that's the jig streamer, as you can see. Uh, it, it rides upside down, uh, just like a, a Euro-style flywood. Uh, these are great to fish with a tight line rig. Super simple. You can tie them in a variety of colors. I like uh, an olive uh, and a black. Those are the two go-to colors that I have. You can get the polar chenille in the olive and use, a, and use an olive marabou. Uh, but again, these saved the day today. So uh, check out the video post. Uh, and the article on troutstrike.com. And if you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, sub hit the subscribe button. That helps us out. And check out troutstrike.com. That's troutstrike.com. So, hey, thanks for watching and make sure you're getting out on the water.